the best, according to Steve, the best rock documentaries slash concert films that are now available to stream or on DVD or Blu-ray ever made, according to me, right? Okay, my, my list, my choices. Now the first one, which could be my number one, uh, is this one, Standing in the Shadows of Motown. Now this, this is a documentary made in the early 2000s, and it really focuses not so much on Motown, but about the Funk Brothers, the band that played on virtually all of Motown's hit records in the 60s. Yeah, right up to around 1970 or so. And in the introduction of this film, they, they weren't known, they weren't named on those Motown records at the time as the Funk Brothers or their names. They were completely invisible to the public. To the fans of Motown, didn't know about this band. And in the introduction to the film, they point out, the filmmakers point out, that the Funk Brothers played on more hit records than the Beatles and the Stones and Elvis and Pink Floyd. Everybody put together didn't equal the number of hit records made by this unknown group of people now known as the Funk Brothers. Or they were known then, but the fans didn't know about them. Anyway, it makes for a really, it's a very emotional uh, trip because if you're old enough to be uh, interested in that music, because I admit it's not probably paramount to the people who are a lot younger than me, but the, the Supremes and the Temptations and the Four Tops and all this timeless music, soul music, R&B music of the 60s, this band played on all of their records and it's a pretty staggering achievement. Um, anyway, and it's very entertaining. It goes through a lot of changes and stuff. It's, it's a great film. Okay, number two on my list is a much more recent, much more recent film. Uh, it might get loud. And it's about three guitar gods, <clears throat> Jimmy Page, Jack White, and Edge from U2. <coughs> and it's three, three generations of rock gods getting together, sort of a summit, not so much to play, but to discuss their craft. There's plenty of playing, and the sound on this uh, Blu-ray, in this case, is really, really good. It's very, uh, you are there, real. But <clears throat> I think the interplay between the three and their discussions and just how they came to be and stuff is really interesting. And I highly recommend it if you're a fat fan of Jack White. And speaking of Jack White, uh, his first group, the White Stripes, this is uh, <coughs> the White Stripes, this is a concert film, and it's under Blackpool lights. And it's very stark looking, it's very high contrast looking film. But it's the White Stripes, so I guess sort of the middle to end of their uh, time together, Jack White and Meg White. And uh, it's a ferocious, ferocious performance. Really good sound, actually. Um, for a fan of Jack White, for me, I think he peaked <laughs> with the White Stripes. But anyway, this is highly, highly recommended. Very entertaining film, concert film. And then, uh, now speaking of the Funk Brothers, then there's this band, The Wrecking Crew. Now, The Wrecking Crew were another invisible band. The Wrecking Crew were basically <coughs> sort of based in LA, but I think they did record in New York. But they were sort of the invisible band to lots and lots of 60s rock groups that actually didn't have, well, let's just put it to be blunt about it, didn't have the chops to play in the studio themselves, so they used this band as their band in their place. So everybody from, uh, um, Nancy Sinatra, Frank Sinatra, but also the, the, the Beach Boys, uh, all the West Coast bands, the Turtles, Mamas and Papas, I mean, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of bands use this band in their place. But what really killed the wrecking, what wrecked the wrecking crew, was that bands started to come along that really play their own music. And there was less and less of a need for the wrecking crew, so it's just sort of faded away. And the, and the <laughs> the person that made this, this, this is a documentary, was the son of uh, the guitar player, or one of the guitar players in the Wrecking Crew. It's a really touching portrait of his father and the rest of the guys in the band, and lots of really, really great footage. Highly, highly recommended. Now we're going to go back, back in time to um, The Who, at the Isle of Wight in 1907. This is just a straight concert film. And this is the Who, I would say, at the peak of their 
of their craft um, a very long time ago. And uh, it's a high energy film. They do a lot of Tommy, or they do all of Tommy in this performance. Uh, sounds really good for a concert film of this time. Highly recommended. Well, everything on this list is highly recommended. Retzel wouldn't be on the list. And here, I couldn't resist, but the talking heads start making sense. This is just such a, well, stop making sense, sorry. Stop making sense, start, stop. Uh, great film. Now, this was directed by a, an actual uh, movie director named Jonathan Demme. And uh, it, it, it's, it's really a beautifully shot con live concert film. Really good sound, uh, stream it, whatever. Watch this film <coughs> if you're a fan of 1980s rock, pop, new wave music. And, oh, let's see. So this is interesting. This, this is, didn't come out until relatively recently, three or four years ago maybe. Muddy Waters with the Rolling Stones in, or not the complete Rolling Stones, but a lot of the Rolling Stones in Chicago in, I think, 1982. So it sounds really good. And the Stones were still comparatively young. Uh, <coughs> Muddy Waters was near the end of his life although he was younger than the Stones are now. And uh, the Stones are in awe of Muddy Waters. It's a really beautiful meeting of the new generation and you know, passing the torch, that sort of thing. It's not like they had never met before, but it's, it's, a, it's a really, uh, and it's in a small club. It's not like in an arena or something. So it has this intimate feel and uh, it's beautiful. It's a really beautiful, touching concert slash documentary. And then the Stones themselves, rounding out my list, we are now near the conclusion of this incredible list. Now, of course, I want you guys to cite your favorite uh, rocks, whatever, uh, concert films, documentaries in the comments section below. Please do that. But anyway, finishing up the list is the Rolling Stones Some Girls Tour from 1978, 77. And this is the, <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry, the Stones in Texas. And what's fascinating, I've talked about this before, but I don't think I've talked about the, the concert film, is that their, their record, Some Girls, came out. And it's incredible to think about that in 1978, 41 years ago, the Stones were old then. <laughs> I mean, they were old a long time ago. And they were concerned that they were losing their credibility as rock musicians. So... Some Girls was an incredible record. I would say probably one of their last, actually Tattoo You is probably their last great record. But this is before that record, 78, and they had something to prove. <coughs> the Stone had something to prove that they still could do it. They still could get it up, so to speak. And their con this concert has just this incredible vitality. And what's really amazing, considering what they do now, is that most of the songs on this uh, the set list were new. <laughs> they weren't playing oldies. They weren't playing I Can't Get No Satisfaction like they do now when they truly are old. Um, you know, most of the songs in, on the set list were new songs. The crowd was really energized. It's, it's, be it's really well shot considering how old it is. and It sounds pretty good. Um, so highly recommend it. I think we've come to the end. Um, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac daily show and it does come up daily so please check back off and blah, 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 all that stuff and uh, if you really dig it please check out the patreon which is at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audio and i will thank you very much in advance for doing that and again so if you have your own favorite discs or movies or whatever please cite them in the comments section. See you next time.